This is Jupiter Today for the 26th of January, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. At zero hours UTC, EO begins the day transiting Jupiter. It will be moving into quadrant three, heading west. Europa starts the day in quadrant four, heading east, going to be moving behind Jupiter. Ganymede starts the day in quadrant two, heading west. And Callisto spends all day in quadrant three, heading west. By six hours UTC, EO is firmly in quadrant three, heading west. Europa is now moved behind Jupiter and is in quadrant one, heading east. By 12 hours UTC, EO has passed its western elongation and is now in quadrant four, heading east. Europa continues in quadrant one, heading east. And Ganymede is now transited Jupiter and is in quadrant three, heading west the rest of the day. By 18 hours UTC, EO is in quadrant four, heading east, and be moving behind Jupiter. And by zero hours UTC, EO has indeed moved behind Jupiter and is now in quadrant one, heading east. Europa has just passed its eastern elongation and is now in quadrant two, heading west. And there will be 10 Jupiter satellite events today. At zero hours 58 minutes UTC, Europa moves into the shadow of Jupiter. At 1.22, EO's shadow egresses. At 1.39 UTC, the transit of EO ends. 425 UTC, Europa reappears from behind Jupiter. At 514, the shadow of Ganymede ingresses. 622, the transit of Ganymede begins. At 853 UTC, the shadow of Ganymede egresses. At 10 hours UTC, the transit of Ganymede ends. At 2019, EO moves into the shadow of Jupiter, and at 2255 UTC, EO reappears from behind Jupiter. And there are three satellite mutual events today. The first takes place from 512 to 518 UTC, and that's when Ganymede occults Europa. This is a 5.6 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.465 magnitudes, but this occultation takes place 14.33 arc seconds from Jupiter. Pretty hard to see. Here's the visibility on the Earth. This point is the location on the Earth where Jupiter will be at the zenith at the time of this event. As you can see, maybe a little bit of Western Europe, Western Africa, most of South America, most of North America, will see this event. The next event goes from 1525 to 1532 UTC, and that's when Ganymede eclipses EO. It's a 7.1 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.329, and EO is Nicely 83.05 arc seconds from Jupiter, and Ganymede and EO are 15.09 arc seconds apart. And as you can see, this will be visible from Australia and a lot of Asia and the Western Pacific. Hawaii might catch it very, very low on its horizon. And the third mutual event today takes just place just a few minutes later at 1606 to 1611 UTC, and that's when Ganymede is going to occult EO. It's a 5.4 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.203 magnitudes. 
and Io is at 74.7 arc seconds from Jupiter. And again, it's going to be visible from a lot of Australia, Western Pacific, most of Asia. We'll be seeing that. Okay, 24 hours of Jupiter sky. And goes Ganymede moving between the Sun and Jupiter, casting its shadow on Jupiter as seen from Earth. It's always fun to watch the smaller moons orbiting and passing in front of or behind the larger moons, popping in and out of Jupiter's shadow. Looks like Ganymede and Callisto are going to line up, but I don't think that we're going to see it at this longitude. We've got the longitude set to zero degrees and the latitude set to zero degrees. Yeah, there were some new images posted as well. And again, I'll just run through these. Some very nice images of the transit the other day, the triple transit. Nice sequence. And this last image is a new project that I'm working on. This is 11 years worth of orbital data of Jupiter and Earth. And what I've done is every seven days in those orbits, I've connected with a line, Jupiter and Earth. And so it makes a rather interesting and complex pattern. And this is just a two-dimensional representation. I'm working on some three-dimensional representations of these, and you can make these plots for any solar system object. And I've got some examples of those on my blog, which you can see in the program notes. So at zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on the celestial sphere is a right ascension of nine hours, 26 minutes, 43.7 seconds and a declination of s positive 16 degrees, 1 minute, 49.3 seconds. The angular separation of Jupiter from the Sun, as seen from Earth, is 166.491 degrees, and that's 1.14 degrees greater than what it was yesterday, still moving towards opposition on the 6th of February. The phase angle, which is the angle between Earth and the Sun, as seen from Jupiter, is 2.472 degrees, and that's 0 0.204 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The distance between Earth and Jupiter also continues to get smaller and smaller as we move towards opposition. Today it's 653,184,607 kilometers, and that's 552,446 kilometers less than what it was yesterday. And that gives a relative velocity between Jupiter and the Earth of 23,018.58 kilometers per hour, and that's 1,914.8 kilometers per hour less than what it was yesterday. And the distance between Jupiter and the Sun is 797,142,775 kilometers. 
And that's 46,851 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. And the Jupiter and the Sun are moving away from each other at a velocity of 1,952.13 kilometers per hour. And that's 1.08 kilometers per hour less than what it was yesterday. The Central Meridian at zero hours UTC. CM1, 47.66 degrees. CM2, 152.4 degrees. CM3, 57.8 degrees. The time of this recording is 0 hours 48 minutes UTC on the 26th of January, 2014. So please subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the new subscribers. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope it's informative and useful. Really like to hear your comments and questions and suggestions. You can send those and any images you have to the email shown. And until tomorrow, I bid you peace.